<laughs> so let me introduce myself and then I'll go through and introduce you and we'll okay, just great. get started. So I was going to put on some music, but then I was like, is she soca? Is she hip hop? Is she, so, you know. I'm a little bit of anything. Okay. Um, hopefully, though, Instagram won't cut you off for having music on. That's happened to me before. Oh, okay. So let's let's not do music because okay. it only took me like a couple of text messages and a quick phone call to influence it. Like, wait, live what? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so let me introduce myself to everyone. My name is Y. Lori Taylor. I'm the vice president for Eden Body Works. And I basically have the distinct pleasure and privilege to run Eden Body Works for Jasmine while she is off at, many of you know, Facebook doing some of her loves and doing some very important work right now uh, with blood donations, et cetera, in the groups and the group chats with Facebook. So with that being said, I am normally behind the scenes, but Shailene is plenty of reason for me to come out and say hello to everybody. <laughs> get to know you so for those of you who don't know Shailene K and Shauna K I mean how do you not know them everybody knows natural hair does care right if you know natural <laughs> hair does care come on give them a pump right give them pumps in the comments <laughs> everybody knows natural hair does care they helped put us on when the movement first started in natural hair and so you amassed this amazing following with your sister. I used to think you guys were twins, so now I know the mm -hmm. difference. But yes. <laughs> you amassed this amazing following with your sister. And then mm -hmm. you decided that, you know, over the course of maybe five years or so, that you would follow your true passion, which is become a stylist, a professional licensed stylist. Yes. All right. So let me tell y'all a little bit about her. She merged her love for cosmetology with her experience as a blogger, blogger, vlogger, and digital influencer. So she has an authentic platform. When I say authentic, the girl gets like 55,000 views on average on her videos. And they're <laughs> amazingly, they're so therapeutic and soothing. I just, I don't even know what to tell you. I could watch them for hours. I'm like, let me find out how to band Thank tonight. You. Oh, let me go to her videos. Let me see how to <laughs> flat twist. Let me go to her videos. Now, of course, mm -hmm. mine never come out like yours. But that's <laughs> how we have you on today. We wanted to hear some of your secrets. Of um, course. But you definitely are focused on textured and mm -hmm. multicultural beauty. You've been in this space. You're, you're not new to this, as they say. No. You're true to this. Very true to this. And we want to help others who are looking for just those DIY stay-at-home tips today. A um, little bit of product education or product usage or even just tips. Because I think what we think is that a product is like a miracle product. And although right. I think we have some of the best products on the market, shameless plug, <laughs> I do also believe it very much goes into technique, texture, and just all around what are those tips that help us kind of cheat the game. And had I known you were going to be wearing a cutie twist out like that, girl, I'd have put my hair in a bun. <laughs> no, your hair looks good. No, your hair looks really good. <laughs> I was like, wait, I had to put my hair in a bun. But this goes to talk about texture, too, because your texture clearly is different than my texture. So my right. hair wasn't going to come out exactly like yours, unless you did it, maybe, anyway. Probably. So. <laughs> so, all right, let's jump into it. Tips, tools, products, all those good things. So, first of all, tell us why you decided to transition to become a licensed stylist. And I ask that because so many people are like, she already had... And a massive a massive following so why would she even you know you didn't really have to go get the credentials so to speak because people were already pretty invested in you and your sister's platform mm -hmm. yes um i think it was very important to become a subject matter expert mm -hmm. to make sure that everything that i discussed whether it be on social media whether it be with my clients in person I had the training, I had the background, I had the education to support anything that I said. At the time, we were representing so many brands that it got a little confusing because one brand may say their product does this, another brand says their product does something else. So you want to make sure that based on your knowledge, based on the actual ingredients, you know exactly what to tell people exactly how to represent what you're claiming to be an expert on. Okay. So that's why it was very important to me. Okay. So I have just a generic question once you said that. When do you also utilize retail products as well as professional products in the salon? Do you um, in the, okay. In the salon, we mostly have professional hair care okay. products okay. because – what you use at home may give you certain results, but what we do in the salon has to be elevated. 
you okay. have to be able to use products that can be used on fine hair, mm -hmm. products that can be used on coarse hair, products that can be used on medium level hair. We can't really just use something that may have worked for us at home and something that we haven't gone to a class and actually trained on. Ah. Something that we have knowledge based on many different textures, many different lengths, many different densities coming to the salon. Now, at a certain level, we can recommend things that may be found at the retail level at a different merchant from the salon, but we wanna make sure that anything we use in the salon is high performing. Mm -hmm. We wanna make sure that it doesn't necessarily compare to what you do at home because then you could have stayed at home. Right. So we want to make sure it's, it's a little elevated. Okay. All right. That's fair. I <laughs> wanted to get that out there because I didn't want people to assume that you just were an influencer who took like everything in the aisle and right. then became a stylist. Cause I think right. that's a very important <laughs> distinction to make. I appreciate that. So I really do. <laughs> well, I come from the professional world. Um, yes. Although now that I've been in the industry, I've definitely been in the retail side much longer right. than I have the professional side. Exactly. So let's just jump right into it. I'm trying to keep my hair decent. I'm using the word decent because literally until Sabrina dragged me out of uh, quarantine <laughs> hiding yesterday, uh -huh. <laughs> I might have just been wearing twists that were in a bun or just might have been wearing a wet bun. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I get on my daughter about that because it definitely yes. stretches her curl pattern and it actually damages her hair because it just makes it matte. And then we spend hours detangling mm -hmm. her hair. Now, me, it's a little different because I, I kind of cheat the game a little bit and really, really go through and detangle it before I do all that but if if you had to tell us like your top I don't know three maybe even five but your top tips for at-home maintenance what would you say those were I have my notes <laughs> okay I wanted to make sure that I didn't just come on here and ramble yeah. um sure and that. that I gave you something you could all take notes on so Good. if you guys want to go ahead and grab something to write on Got okay you. while Lori has her pen um, if you want to just get something, even if you type it in your laptop real quick, um, I always hear trainers talk about the core, right? Mm -hmm. So they're always talking about how you need to strengthen your core because your core holds everything up. Okay. To me, that resonated for hair and for my clients because I want to make sure they have their core things that no matter whether you're, you're coming to the salon whether you're here interacting on social media or whether you're just following my page, you know exactly what those core items are. Okay. So um, so the, the things that came to me were four different core items. You want to okay. master your core technique, and that includes your detangling process like you just spoke about with your daughter. Okay. And detangling has to start before you wet your hair, before you shampoo, really? before you do any of that really yes oh. because if if i'm trying to cleanse my hair i can't cleanse something that's matted mm. it needs to go from the scalp all the way to the ends for the shampoo to be effective and if it's trying to get through a maze and a labyrinth it won't ever do what it's intended to do so that's why you want to make sure that that core is secure you want to make sure those techniques are there so that when you get to the styling it's a breeze so first thing is your core techniques, right? Mm -hmm. Then the next thing you want to really, really focus on are core products, right? Okay. So when I'm shampooing a client and I get them in the bowl, these are the things I'm asking. What do you use to detangle? How do you detangle? When do you detangle? What do you use to shampoo? I'm like going through all of this. So you're getting your hair shampooed and you're like, uh, <laughs> you know, like you're, you're having to talk to me. Right. Because I want to make sure from start to finish, by the time you exit, you know pretty much what you need to do because I'm bridging the gap between you doing it yourself and me being the beauty professional. Okay. Okay. okay? So then the third one is your um, core tools. What tools mm -hmm. do you need to use to detangle? Are you using something throughout the shampoo process? And then what tools are you using to style? And then the last part is your core style. Okay. Like, what what did you do to do your, your hair like this, Lori? <laughs> so I cheated because <laughs> my daughter has been in YouTube heaven, and she's a product junkie. So I'm not a product junkie. I stick with the same right. regimen all the time. And you know I wear my hair straight. 
So yeah. my hair really hasn't been straightened because I was on bed rest for the pregnancy and then had the baby. So I've seen a salon like three times in the last 12 months and I'm dying because mm-hmm. that's not my normal. Right. So she's been helping me. I'll wash it. Mm-hmm. We deep condition together. So I have like a thermal cap thing that you put in the microwave. Heats right. up. We do that. And then I always use a leave-in on my hair. I'm just lazy, okay. number one. So people say, why do you always use a leave-in? I use a, a thinner leave-in, though. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't use heavy leave-ins because the creams tend to weigh my hair down because it's a right. thinner texture or it's a mm-hmm. finer. My hair is really fine. So we did that. I took the leave-in, and then we did six big twists. Okay. And I left them in for four days <laughs> before I even bothered to do anything different so that the definition would be there. So you basically ran down your core regimen, your core things that you're going to do because you can't get to, to what you're used to. You can't get to the salon and get it straightened, right? Mm-hmm. So you ran through everything that you did. You did your six big twists. So to me, it makes the most sense to have all those things solidified so that by the time you get to the style, there's no guesswork, there's no mm-hmm. frustration, there's nothing that needs to happen extra because we've done it from the core techniques to the core products, to the core tools, to the core style, everything is just seamless. Yeah, one thing I'm missing is I I see people rotting the ends. So we didn't do that. And I was like, that goes into your tools conversation. I just, we Mm -hmm. we have to, so now we have rods because of course now we've ordered them, but we didn't have them. And I was like, hmm, maybe we should have those. My daughter is biracial, so she Mm -hmm. has naturally curly hair. Okay. Um, Not that mine isn't naturally curly. I don't want y'all to come for me in the comments. (laughs) Mine just, my curls are not as tight as hers. <laughs> That's how her texture is naturally. Yes, yes wait, I don't she want to. doesn't really have to do much to mm-hmm. get it to look very curly, whereas right. you and I have to. Yeah, we have okay. to do something different, so yeah. Right. Okay. So. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that people understood that because I did a poll last week on my, my page and people didn't really seem to have an issue with their shampoo and what products they had. The, more, the issue that they were having with, was with styling. Mm-hmm. So I think that it's great that people have those initial steps down and that when you do get to the styling, you do think about the tools that you're going to use. So when I did my hair last night, I think I did about 10 to 15 flat wow. twists. Wow. But I also, just like you and your daughter realized, I put rods on the end. Mm. I have many different textures throughout my hair. Um, The front is very loose. The sides um, are a little curly. In the middle, it's very coarse. And then the back is very loose. So to give it a uniform appearance, like you, I don't know if you can tell. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. But it looks uniform. (laughs) But on the ends, I made sure that I put something just so that the front wouldn't be, you know, straight down. The back wouldn't just be all wavy. It, it yeah, does help to know which tools we need to use. Yeah. That's that's definitely my issue is figuring out the tools part. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a big proponent of, like, I'll do a clarifying wash once a month or maybe twice a month. It depends mm-hmm. on how often I wash my hair. Right. And then I follow up with a moisturizing shampoo mm-hmm. because I just, I like, I, it's not stripping per se for me. I just, in my head, I feel like that's something I've always been trained to do. So I'll just keep doing it. And then I deep condition every two weeks out of habit. Now, okay. I don't, it's sometimes I'm like, mm, I don't even know if I need to do it that much, but I know that I've been doing it because that's how I was groomed to learn. That's how I learned it in the industry. So um, that's, that's great training. Think about it in terms of soaping your body, right? Mm-hmm. So you're going to go through and make sure you get any dirt, oil, anything off of your body. And then you're gonna dry your body and then put some lotion on. You're not gonna you're not gonna just get dressed and then just you're gonna be itchy. It's gonna be dry. Your hair functions in a similar way. So when you're gonna shampoo your hair, you do wanna get that surface layer of dirt off, right? Mm-hmm. And that's your cleansing shampoo. Yeah. But you don't want to have the deep conditioner do extra work. So then you put a little bit of the moisture back into the hair with that moisturizing shampoo. Mm-hmm. And then you follow it back up with that deep conditioner. The deep conditioner just seals the deal. Wow. And it doesn't have to do all that extra work because you made sure you put that moisturizing shampoo right in the middle of it. Wow. I didn't even Mm -hmm. think about that. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. So then that sounds like you are a proponent of deep condition. Do you deep condition almost every client that comes to see you? Yes. Okay. The only time I won't is if it's asked of me if someone's like oh i don't want you to deep condition my hair right. then i have to take a step back and kind of find out why mm -hmm. are you in a rush are you trying to leave out of here with just the shampoo like what's going on i kind of ask some probing questions but for the most part every single person we already build that into the service right okay so it's already built into the service we're already planning for it in terms of time in terms of product and in terms of results Wow. So skipping that step will not give me the desired results of a certain style that you want. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not going to use necessarily the um, the treatment that I used on somebody else because they're getting a blowout. Mm -hmm. So I need to use something that's a thermal protectant. Whereas if you're getting some twists, I want to use something that's very moisturizing to make sure it's shiny, make sure it's um, healthy, make sure your elasticity is intact. So it, it's very important to have that treatment, especially in the salon. You want to make sure that you build that time into your day so mm -hmm. that you're expecting to go ahead and get that treatment. And that's like 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. Okay. That's not mm -hmm. much. I mean, in salon, it's, it's, it's probably more escalated because we're using little dryers at home or in my case. Right. I'm so I'm, <laughs> I'm spending 40 minutes thinking I'm doing something like, is it still hot? Is it still warm? You know, is it still doing what it's supposed to be doing? So, okay. So I'm going to talk a little, I'm going to ask you some questions about my hair and then I'm okay. watching the screen. So I'm trying to catch the questions people have, but there's a question bar too that I'll allow them to use in a little okay. bit as well. So I have this unruly gray hair right here. Yes. <laughs> It's actually everywhere, but for whatever reason, my gray pops up only. right in the right in the front. Mm -hmm. I think that's so weird, but I feel like that's hereditary in my family because we all gray very early, so I can't okay. really do anything about that. Yeah. So I have found since I'm home now, I had to change my routine a little bit because of the hair here. So I I, I had to switch shampoos, conditioners, all kinds of things right there. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend home hair coloring? Because I'm not. So I, I we just redid our bathroom, so I don't want to have my bathroom be all black in here. But <laughs> right. what do you think about? Do you recommend people wait, wait it out, and just deal with the the different? Because it's different. It's very coarse here versus here, and for my yeah. hair. Or do you say you know color at home? Go for it, girl. Because look at your hair; it's a rich black color. And I'm not saying you colored your hair. It's just so rich and pretty that I'm like, I want that. <laughs> So it's an illusion because right now I need a trim and I need my, my color redone. Fawny will tell you I haven't had any of that since January. But um, what makes me able to stretch it out and it not be so obvious is a professional quality. Now, I want everyone to extend themselves a lot of grace mm -hmm. right now, right? Yep. We're going through something that none of us have ever expected that none of us really know the end date the timeline or anything so at the minimal level right and that's a demi permanent that's a rinse right that's okay. just something that's gonna go right on top of the cuticle it's not really gonna penetrate all the way like let's say a, a lightener would but if you just have like some black color <laughs> okay and you want to go ahead and touch up those roots I can worry about that later. I can fix it later. What I don't want you to do is try to bleach your hair at home. Okay. Got it. Okay. So Ladies, I'm, I'm okay. Bleach. Huh? I said do not bleach. So do not go lighter. But if, if we're doing a demi, if we're doing a, a rinse, okay. Because at the end of the day, right now, I know how it feels, right? Mm -hmm. I know how it feels to be in the house the looking a little less cute than I normally am sure <laughs> and then I take a shower I shampoo my hair and I do something to it I feel amazing right mm -hmm. so I feel like all the stylists are like don't color your hair okay but if it's something we can fix and this could last who knows how long this could last right if it's something that we can tackle later and we can correct and I'm only talking about a demi permanent color <laughs> okay that will be okay anything else i say just wait until we can see you in the salon and we can do it professionally for you okay fair okay. fair <laughs> so someone jumped in and they're 
they're all into your twist. They want to know, I'm going to tell you the, the questions, but you can answer them. I have them written down. So don't worry about forgetting them. Okay. Okay. Why is your hair so shiny? <laughs> what do you do at night to make it look like that? Okay. Is it cut like on wet hair? Cause it looks like, you know, it looks like you have a little bit of a kind of a, a cut there. Okay. Is it, is it cut that way or is it just styled that way? I'll start with those three and then I have some more I see jumping on the screen here. So Okay. So the first one is why is it so shiny? Yep. Um, it's a combination of what I did last night, um, which was my shampoo and my treatment. Mm -hmm. I did a protein moisture balance treatment last night because my hair was feeling awful. Like okay. really bad. And that was my own fault because I kept doing rinse out conditioners. Mm -hmm. I hadn't done anything to um, add heat to the hair and let the cuticle rise and really penetrate into the hair strand. Mm -hmm. So doing that last night really helped with that shine and that natural luster. Okay. Another thing is when I took my flat twist down, I used the product to also help with the shine and the luster and to make sure that, as I mentioned before, I need a trim really bad at this point <laughs> so i made sure that i used something that would help with the appearance of frizz and just smoothing the hair as i'm taking my um twist down okay um remind me what the second question was so what do you do at night at to night keep your hair like that mm -hmm. okay so at night i'll just take a scarf and tie around the sides and then push my hair up just a little bit like a um, pineapple right okay and then a loose bonnet over top of it so not the small bonnet, but the big bonnet. Okay. So yeah. if you do put a loose bonnet, some people just say you can pineapple and leave it up. So when I do that, my hair mats. So maybe I need to try right. on it. And, you, and, and that's the second part because you still want something that's smooth and something that will give that um, silk to the hair and help it to not mat down and squeeze to your hair. It still allows it to move around, but as it's moving... It's not touching cotton. It's not touching something that's mm -hmm. drying. It'll still help to smooth out the hair. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the third one had to do with the volume. Somebody said, is it cut like that? Did you, is it the way you flat twist, twisted, sorry, and rotted it? Mm -hmm. Like what gave it that type of volume and shape? So the shape does come from the haircut. That's okay. one. Um, and then it's also how I parted and also how I flat twisted my hair. So um, I did a middle part and then two layers in the back. Mm -hmm. Though I have a lot of hair strands, that's the amount of um, strands per square inch in my hair. It okay. is not a thick strand. It is not a, um, I, don't, I don't have thick hair. My hair mm -hmm. is fine. Okay. So I want to I wanna put the volume into my hair. I, I don't care to do individual twists because I'll get more definition. I won't get as much volume. Mm -hmm. So that's why I do flat twists and then I'll do layers. Interesting. Yeah, my client said a Mondo bonnet. Yes, a Mondo bonnet is very much what you need. <laughs> All right, so I'm writing it down. Mondo bonnet. So we're going to have to do a giveaway with the Mondo bonnet and they can thank yes. Style Queen Beauty for that. <laughs> that would be so perfect. So someone said, recommend a detangling tool because they get a lot of fairy knots, tangles. Um, and at the same time, the tool, they also said, are there styles to help reduce fairy knots and tangles? I meant to have my tools here. Um, um, that's okay. And my son is outside because <laughs> I sent him outside. So he will be making a bunch of noise. So the Felicia Leatherwood brush is brush an with option. The best. Yes. Brush with the best yeah. is an option in terms of a detangling tool that you can use prior to shampooing, during your shampoo, and styling. Mm. Um, another option is what we use in the salon. It's a detangling brush from the brand Plugged In. I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. Plugged In, but, okay. Mm -hmm. But you just want to get something that allows you to detangle the hair, and smooth the hair at the same time. Not something that's going to make the hair tangle back up. And that's what we've probably e experienced with tools before they got to the elevated place that they are now. Mm -hmm. They were probably detangled up until here. And then, I mean, sorry, up until here. And then by the time you get to the middle to detangle at the end again, it's detangled. It's, it's tangled again. Right. 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 Um, so that, that's one of the tools that we use in the salon. 
and that allows us to get through the process. Okay. If your hair keeps matting up and your hair keeps getting tangled, you're going to be in the salon for like four hours. Wow. No one has that time. Nah. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you're using something that allows you to get through the tangles and keep the hair smooth. Okay. And also section the hair. Okay. Um, so you don't want to detangle it and then leave it out. You can bantu knot it. You can twist it. You can brush it. I see a lot of my clients and um, finding my mentor in here talking about it now. Those brushes and those tools, like I mentioned in the core techniques, that's what's going to get you through your shampoo process. That's what's mm -hmm. going to get you through your styling process. Yeah, yeah. yeah I see Salon. Is it Noah? Is that how you Salon say it? Noah. Mm -hmm. Salon Noah. Salon Noah. Shout out to y'all for helping answer the questions. We appreciate the backup. <laughs> and I didn't even ask them to. That's just straight love right there. I like that. I like that. Supporting each other. That's what it's about. Someone asked, I think, Honey G about Felicia Leatherwood's brush. Just so you know, it's brushed with the best. So you can look it up on Instagram. But you can also go to Felicia's page and then you'll find her brush as well. So someone said your hair is super moisturized. Look, they just took us all on a tangent away from our original conversation. But it's fine. <laughs> That's okay. If you don't mind, I don't mind. They said your hair looks incredibly moisturized. What did you put on the twist as you took them down after, and how do you maintain them day by day? Okay. So I'm a styling foam girl. Okay. Um, I love styling foam for a flat twist. Um, I think I realized a while ago that for me, a cream product takes a long time to one dry for my hair mm -hmm. and then I didn't get as much volume when I was taking down my flat twist so I'm like I need to use something else and um something that will give me a lightweight hold but still give me a hold something that won't take forever to dry mm -hmm. and that's how I um fell in love with styling foam okay you can use a setting lotion it it may give you a firm hold that may be a little crispy a little crunchy so okay. that's why i tend to gravitate towards styling foam and in the salon we have different levels of hold so we'll usually say how how do you want your hair to be do you want it to be super like you want it to be in there do you want it to be <laughs> like a firm hold or do you want it to be like a soft hold okay um so to bring it back to the salon and one of the advantages of it, that's just something that we learn over time, that people love different things. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about the Eden brand is you have so much to offer that people can, you know, find their retail needs in the store. It doesn't just have to be, oh, my gosh, they, they just have this and I'm stuck with it. Right. You want to make sure you have those options, and you guys do. So when you realize, oh, I don't have to necessarily use the um, – curling cream mm -hmm. i can use the foam it does help because i'm recommending it now so people are like well i want to go get the phone and <laughs> the brand doesn't have one so it, it's right. just a kudos to you all for actually having that to offer yeah it's actually one of our it's one of our most unique and favorite products because we have it in a conditioner mm -hmm. category so it's yeah. a foam conditioner so you're able to like you said style with it but then have a daily application of it so what are you doing, say, day three as a refresh on your twist? Are you still using a foam or are you using a different category? Like, mm. or, or you don't have to refresh because you just self -love. I don't <laughs> refresh. <laughs> okay. I caught that. I caught that. Um, and, and nor do I really want my clients to either. Oh, wow. It's a lot of work to get your hair done and then you have to go back over it in two days to retwist all over again. Mm -hmm. And that's why high performing products are important mm -hmm. because I want you to literally do what I do, which is to tie the hair, um, cover it with your Mondo bonnet. In the morning, you take it down, you refluff it, you reshape it, and you mm -hmm. go on about your day. Okay. Come back home and do the same thing. Maybe at a about day five, day six, you can put a lightweight moisturizer on your hair. Okay. Something that's cream-based, not water-based, because if it's uh, water-based, you're going to lose the definition, and then your hair is just going to revert. It's not going to keep the definition of the twist. Right, right. Right? So that by the time day seven, day 10, day 12 comes, it's time to shampoo again. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. 
So I have a question here about dry scalp. Any recommendations for dry scalp? And they were pretty generic. The question was just plain like that. They didn't say I have psoriasis. They didn't give me all that background. It just says I have dry scalp. So, right. Um, so when someone says something as generic as I have dry scalp, then um, I, I dig a little deeper to ask some questions, right? So what's your water intake? That's mm -hmm. going to be very important. When you shampoo your hair, are you actually cleansing your scalp? Because if you're not cleansing your scalp and you have buildup on your scalp, that could be why your, your scalp, which is your skin, is itchy, why it's dry, why, why it just feels like you shampoo, you get out the shower, and it's still flaky. That's okay. happened to me. And that's when I know I've, I've probably done a lazy shampoo, right? Right. Um, and then it also comes back to our core, right? So if you're just doing a cleansing shampoo, right? And for some people, that's all they do. They just do a cleansing shampoo and a deep conditioning. Mm -hmm. Like we talked about before, if you've gotten everything off of your body and you haven't replenished anything on there and you haven't gotten out the shower and you haven't put lotion on, you're going to be dry and itchy. Mm -hmm. So it comes back to the core. It comes back to shampooing. It comes back to making sure you're doing a cleansing shampoo and then a moisturizing shampoo. Your okay. moisture and everything, that's the foundation. It comes at that shampoo process. Okay. Now, we do have some people that have internal conditions, right? Mm -hmm. Something that is requiring them to go to the next level of care where they might have a, dermatolo a dermatologist that has to come in or a trichologist that has to come in and say, you know, it's beyond the cosmetologist level. Mm -hmm. It's something going on with you internally, something going on with your system. Right. Um, so we just have to probe a bit and okay. not just say, oh, just throw this oil on it. Sometimes that doesn't always solve it. Sometimes it comes down to the techniques and what you've been doing at home, what you've been using. Okay. So someone asked, um, well, before we move off of this, Sabrina said her mm -hmm. hair is short. <laughs> so she said she yes, can't pineapple. Yes, I did see that. <laughs> yeah, she That's said, a very good question. Yeah. So instead of pineappling, what I would suggest for someone with Sabrina's length, somebody with Sabrina's texture, just anybody with a shorter length of hair, is to just gather the hair in sections, right? So if I don't want to have to retwist and my hair is maybe like this long, and I'm... And what you're doing by tying the hair at night is preventing it from reverting because you're warm in your bed. You could be sweating. You don't want to have to redo your hair because you lost the style at night. So I would just do sections throughout the hair, right? Do a section here, a section here, and then in the morning release the sections and then fluff and reshape. Okay. That's what I usually recommend for my clients with a shorter length. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Good question. So someone said, should, how should the water temperature be for shampooing versus conditioning and or deep conditioning? Okay. Um, shampooing, you want to use warm water. Um, sometimes using something too hot can be drying to the hair too. Mm -hmm. And that can dry out that skin. Just like if we take a hot shower, we can relate everything back to skin, right? Yeah. Take a super hot shower, your skin is going to be super dry because that water is going to draw out anything. So I would recommend a uh, kind of mid temperature, so something warm to shampoo. Um, it allow the cuticle to open and release the dirt, oil, environmental contaminants, and then to um, deep condition the hair after you're rinsing out your your deep conditioner. You want to do a tepid water, something that's as cold as you can take it, but not ice cold. Oh, okay. <laughs> It doesn't have to be ice cold. You just want to make sure that you don't have it on a warm temperature because then your cuticle won't seal. Uh -huh. Then that leads to frizz. That leads to your hair not being as smooth as possible during your styling process. Then you take it down and you're like, what's going on? Your cuticle wasn't closed. Okay. All right. Good stuff. So as cool as you can take it. I'm taking good notes here. So when you I see, see, I see. You see all these quotes in the email blast from the team. You'll know why. I see. My okay. Team. I see my. <laughs> I'll be looking throwing, out for it. <laughs> I see them throwing comments up there. So I'm like, hmm. And and I want to be um. Very open to the the spectrum of clients that are out there and the spectrum of, of naturals that are out there. 
because um back to my notes you have from your DIY naturalista that's like a mistress. Like she's mixing up everything. She doesn't buy products at all. Everything is is yeah. quote unquote natural. And then you have everybody in between all the way up to the people that don't touch their hair at all. They don't buy products. They don't buy. I have a client. She had to get a brush because of the pandemic because she comes every two weeks. Mm. So um, these questions are really good and nothing is, you know, a silly question because we have to be mindful that at, this knowledge isn't general for everybody. Mm -hmm. There are people that are just coming in, people that are just going natural, people that have basic questions. So these questions are really great because we literally have everything in between in the spectrum of the naturalista. We do. People are going to have 50 million questions. So I want to tell you guys a cheat. <laughs> We're going to have her back next week. So if we don't get to your questions today. Yes, and a lot I'll of, be back. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of you, I want you to know, I'm purposely skipping your porosity questions because in fairness to her, I wanted her to have an opportunity to do high versus low and really do a breakdown and then okay. give you guys recommendations for eating products. But again, that wasn't the goal of today's, but it is right. in, It is within the series conversation. So don't think I'm ignoring you. Don't be mad, you <laughs> all. Just let's let's table that until next week and let's have a deeper conversation about that um, yes. at that time. So someone said, while we're talking about water temperature, semi-permanent color, is there a certain mm -hmm. temperature you should use when coloring your hair at home? Um, I want to stay away from the semi-permanent question. Okay. Because... As we mentioned in the first part of the video, we're okay with Demi at home only, okay. right? Got it. Because I don't want to recommend something to someone that has never seen my hands and never seen anything like that because then I'm liable. Yeah. Um, just because of my personal morals and my personal ethics, I feel responsible, right? Yes. So while I appreciate the question, <laughs> I'm going to recommend a professional stylist beyond demi-permanent during the pandemic. Yes, I appreciate okay. that. I asked okay. the question specifically because I didn't want them to think I was ignoring it. Okay. But you and I have had these offline color conversations. I'm just going to be gray because I'm not adventuresome and I don't want to take my hair out or do anything. Right. Um, but yeah, someone said, I love the honest answer. She's so authentic. Thank you for being transparent. We feel the same way. It's why we wanted to have this conversation with you. So I have a few more questions and we're going to have some fun. Okay. Do you have a favorite Eden product? Mm, yes. Oh, uh, my favorite is the Curl Hydration Conditioner. Ah, um, hibiscus honey. Yes, this mm. smells so good. <laughs> now, I don't want you guys to feel like this thing is, is completely full. She hasn't been using it. We always have like a nice, you know, Vanna right. White version <laughs> just to make sure that we can show you guys. Um, right. Right. you know a presentable aesthetically pleasing product um but this i love the way it smooths through the hair mm -hmm. um i love the smell and it's not too overpowering mm -hmm. um i just love how my hair reacts to it okay um this is my favorite of the new products um classic eden body works classic look at you you on the team. <laughs> she said hey i've been in this thing a long time okay uh, I'm going to say um, the coconut shea leave-in conditioner Okay. because um, a lot of times I like to use a liquid leave-in. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, yeah, a liquid leave-in, something yeah. that's not creamy like this. All right. But when I need something to get in there and really give me that moisture, really give me those conditioning properties, then I'll reach for this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I am more of a liquid. So I like our almond marshmallow therapy leave-in because it's a liquid kind of watery spray for those of you who aren't familiar with it. It's like a watery spray. And then also the almond line, a couple of the products don't have coconut oil in them, which mm -hmm. some people have those allergies. So that's very yes. helpful to folks. Um, mm -hmm. But the hibiscus honey hydration um, conditioner is it's very, tough. the curl conditioner is very, very, very popular because you can rinse it out or leave it in. And you can yes. do so many things with it. People twist with it. They iron out hair with They just do a lot. They blow dry with it. They do a lot of things with it. It's very versatile. So let's, let me see. So Sabrina played a little game called This or That. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, 
I'm going to do it from a personal perspective with like three, four questions. And then I'm going to flip it over back over to hair and we'll okay. round it out to round out the conversation. Okay. So this or that. So Maddie had this thing with all these black men on there. Maddie James, by the way. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying Will Smith or Idris Elba? Uh, Will Smith. Ah, soca or hip hop? Hip hop. <laughs> Cook or eat out? Now, don't don't take it to the pandemic because we all became a stay at home mom at this <laughs> point. But <laughs> Cook or um, eat out? home cooked meal or eat out? Home cooked meal. Mm. Mm-hmm. So hopefully nobody from your family is watching this. Kicking it with your girls on vacation or family vacation? Kicking it with my girls. Okay. <laughs> and again, ignore the pandemic. Beach or cabin with your loved one? With your your husband, because in your case, you're married. Yeah. Um, Beach. Beach. All right. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> the first thing you want to do, or the first place you want to go outside of the U.S., when this is all over, I want to go to Tulum. Ah, everybody keeps saying that, and, and I think that's why because everybody makes it look amazing. So I want a <laughs> bandwagon too. I want to go to Tulum. I want to jump in the in the. I don't know how to how to say it with the sayotis. Yeah, I know, I, I know Those, what you're talking the about. Cans with the water. <laughs> yeah. I want to go there. Okay. All right. One product in your hair toolkit. You cannot live without. It could be a product, a tool, whatever, in your box. What's one thing you cannot live without? My detangling brush. Oh, okay. Can't okay. do it. Okay. Can't live without her detangling brush. No, ma'am. Okay. So now, quick, quick product, this or that. Okay. Clarifying shampoo or moisturizing shampoo? Ooh. I, I'm. I have to take off my professional brain, right? Okay. Okay. I'm just. An, I'm just answering like Shaleen. Okay. 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 Um, I'm gonna say moisturizing. Leave-in deep conditioner. <sighs> deep conditioner. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cream or serum. Cream. Okay. Well, we already know foam. I can't ask you the foam because that's. <laughs> Fair. That's unfair. Um, <laughs> protective style or all natural? All natural. Okay. Mm-hmm. So someone asked about your favorite protective style to do for clients that's easy to maintain. I would have to say flat twist mm-hmm. because you can get two two weeks out of flat twist, and here's how. So I can flat twist it into a bun. Mm -hmm. I can flat twist it up. I can flat twist it however you want. And you could leave that in for about a week, right? Mm -hmm. Then that next week, you could work out. You can do whatever you want to do. That next week, you're like, I'm stepping out. I want my flat twist. I want a a Shaleen flat twist. That's when you take it down. You get the maximum... um, return on your investment from coming to the salon Mm -hmm. because you get your protection during that first week and you're still technically protected because you can still get to your scalp you're not necessarily combing it during that second week and you still have a second week style Mm -hmm. that looks amazing after that first week the first week looks good yep a flat twist i like to make sure that they're pretty solid but when you get to that second week it just looks good okay all right so I am at the end because we said we want to do a quick 30 minutes, but you all had so many questions and I yes. have all of the, we way past the time. I know, I know. And I, and I apologize for that, but it's such a great conversation. No, this was really good. I, I kind of built that in. I kind of already knew, you know, we might go over, so I don't mind at all. Yeah, so we're going to go. So next week we're going to try and tackle, we had a lot of questions about breakage and moisture that I wrote down. And then I think these porosity conversations, I'm probably going to just give you the mic and let you have a little bit of low versus high. We we kind of address that in our blog post on Eden from a product usage standpoint. And we do that based upon the ingredients in the products and what we've learned from some of our focus groups and our influencer friends. Mm -hmm. Um, But it would be nice to hear your conversation on it. We don't do as much with like, I'm a 4C or I'm a 4A or a 3 we kind of go, is your hair really tightly coiled? Is it curly? Is it, you know, finer texture? I'm trying to get out of saying my hair is so thin. I'm trying to say it's right. fine versus it's so thin. Um, but 
I can't wait to talk to you next week. Uh, you yes, guys stay same tuned. Here. We're going to post it up and we'll see okay. you guys next week. Thank you, Shaleen. Thank you, Ilori. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. They were so engaged. This is I great. Know. You guys, make sure you're following <laughs> Style Queen Beauty so you can get all of her tips, all of her knowledge. And if you have not seen her do all the bomb hair, she has mad videos out there. So please, please, please follow her and support. Bye. Bye. Wait, do I have to do something different? <laughs> I'll come.